gonna have to show that again, but in real time though, Tyler, can you come and do it for us real quick? This is, this is just a funny video I wanted just to show everybody because we were at a, like a little church event conference this weekend and we, had, we were there like two hours early just to save seats uh, so we could get like good rows or good seats and everything. Yeah, zoom right in on that big, big nice. nose, the schnoz. The schnoz. And like we were doing these weird things. He's like, here, record me going in slow-mo. I want to see what, the, like, what this looks like. And he did one other, something else. I don't know what you did. You just, yeah, that. That one looked really weird. But then he's like, oh, I want to do this one. I want to do this one. So can we get a real live demonstration? <laughs> That's what it looks like in real life situation. Can we show the video one more time? Thank you, Mr. Tyler. It's just so weird. He looks like a fish. Fish, exactly, fish out of water. That's exactly what we're going to call that, Ben. Thank you, Mr. Tyler, for just everything you do and everything that you are, Mr. Fish out of the water. How's everybody's week? Incredible, Incredible good, great, blessed, fabulous. Does anyone else in this room besides Sarah? <laughs> No one just wants to talk about their week. Just want to get it over with. Great! <laughs> cool. Uh, a couple friends and I, uh, Tyler, uh, my wife Kylie, uh, Grace, Sarah, Pastor Jordan, Pastor Dawn, and Adrian. Did I miss anyone? No. And Adrian, we all went to Canada this past uh, weekend, Saturday, Friday and Saturday. Can, ever, can we all get like a, just a national, like just one unified a in the house of one, two, three. A! Come on, we can do better than that. I know we have better Canadian accents than that. Everyone knows A? Come on, can we get one unified A? One, two, three. A! A! That's good. So I was, again, I've only been to Canada twice, so I was Canadian for the second time in my life uh, for about 36 hours, 48 hours. I don't know, whatever it was. But we get there um, on Friday night. We go straight to this event, and it's all about uh, prophecy, and there's a message, and there's deliverance, and it was just so cool, and everything just happened, and we're just so grateful to be back because it's, it's not a, a coincidence that eight of us went, and the, uh, the meaning for the number eight in the Bible, it means new beginning. And so eight of us from the one church went and came back, so I'm believing God, there's a new beginning, there's a new season that he wants to take every single person through, but we gotta start living what he wants us to, to live and not through our own pleasures. But this event was super cool, it was crazy. Uh, I highly recommend uh, looking up Prophet Ed Centrinelli, I think that's how you say his name, on your free time, he's a cool dude. Um, he loved us, We just to kind of give you the demographic of this place is, uh, like I said, during transition, we were worshiping to Buganji, Bunjanvi. So it's, it's a, a different ethnicity, and uh, I believe it's mainly an in, uh, from India. And to see an India church of India people in the church praising Jesus is a miracle. It's amazing. And it was just so cool. And uh, even though we didn't know the words, or what it meant um, until the second day they put the English words underneath of it because they realized there was a lot of Americans there. Um, but until they did that, like, it was just awesome. Like, the way that they worshipped with these drums and the tambourines and the words that they would, that how they would just say the words and how it sounded and how it all flowed together and then just the tempo of everything, it really was, like, the coolest thing ever to be a part of. And it showed me that, you don't have to know the words. You don't have to know the song to praise God. And it was just so cool to see a totally different uh, group of people worship the same God. And, we be, and everything was just in that building was just on fire. And just the passion that came out, it was, it was amazing. It was awesome. I want some of their CDs to listen to myself. And hopefully I can learn uh, their songs because they're powerful. But what was that, Ben? <laughs> I don't know, <laughs> but it was just real cool. I really liked it, and it was just a, uh, a culture shock for a little bit, but when the other thing I realized, too, when you get around uh, people that know God and love God, 
there's no culture shock at all. Like, we all just praise one God. We're all unified with one God. We all are serving one God. And it's just bring God just brings people together. And it was just so cool that he just brought two different embassies together, two different cultures together. It was just amazing. We just had a blast praising him. And more breakthrough came through that praise than the message or the, the deliverance or anything for me. And that's where I was just like, you know, we have to learn a, like how to let our passion for Christ just jump out of our skins. And what keeps us there is because we're, we're really not living a life for God. So today, as I just showed you um, that video uh, with Tyler, I, I don't know if anyone saw the words. Did anyone see the words that's, that was on the video? It said, to, your, to the viewer's pleasure. And that's a word that I want to focus on tonight is pleasure. Because I believe this world has gone into a pattern, into a routine of thinking it's okay to live life for your own pleasure instead of living life for God. And how it talks about in Romans, not to conform to the, the mentality of the world, a lot of Christians have done that. A lot of Christians have come to church. A lot of Christians just pray. A lot of Christians just do serve God for their own blessing, for their own pleasure. And it just doesn't stop there, but then they start to make decisions in their everyday life for their own pleasure. And we've been growing up in a culture that says, if it feels good, it's okay. If it makes you happy, it's okay. If it is not hurting others, it's okay. And we've been living with these three lies as truth. It's not okay. What's okay is the truth. A lie can make you happy. So you know you have, a, you have a friend. I was just um, working the other day, and I have a friend that came in, and he's like, uh, I just want to talk to this person about another person, and, but don't, don't, don't listen because I know you're not going to like it because he knows I'm going to give him the real truth because he doesn't want to hear what I have to say to him. He doesn't want to know what it's going to cost him or what what's gonna, the outcome is going to be. It's because we like to play in the, that, that, that weird zone of like, I know it can go this way or it can go that way, and it's just so fun, and it's so, I feel so free. I feel like I'm living, but really, you're just, you're just stuck in the middle, and you're left empty and broken. And that's why we keep going through the same cycles in life every single time. I know we all have a friend that's going to tell us exactly what our ears want to hear. Do, am I lying? We all go to that one friend for, for advice or just a consultant and, and just listen to them because they're going to tell you, oh, you're so great, you're not making a mistake. It's the other person's fault. Or you're doing everything right when everything you could be doing is wrong. We have those people, it's, to be honest, it's true. And I have those people, and there's, I realize now there's times that I do that still. And it's like i got to catch myself. It's like, okay, don't tell me what I want to hear. Tell me the truth. And that's how we get set free. That, that's how we get set free. The truth will set you free. Not believing a lie, not believing because you feel good it's okay. A lie can feel good. You can lie on your taxes and get a million dollars back. Let's just say that was real. That would feel real good in your bank account, wouldn't it? Who would like a million dollars right now? Heck yeah, me too. You're not, a lie doesn't hurt, hurt anyone if you're lying to yourself because you're going to believe it, and then you're going to think that it's not hurting, but really it is. Like, our minds are so powerful, it'll get, and we're into this world, and we conform to this world, we'll be deceived in so many different ways. And these three ways, if it feels good, it's okay. If it makes you happy, it's okay. If it's, hurting, if it's not hurting others, it's okay. That's false. We're going to just throw those out the window right now and say it's not okay. What is okay, what is good, is the, the word of God, the promises, the truth that sets us free. And in 2 Timothy 3, 1 through 5, I was just trying to find um, some things because life is not for our own pleasure, but we need to live it for God. And, if, if, and the reason why I know that is, is because God made us to, to have his pleasures in life, but at the time that we give our life to Christ for salvation, Jesus can honestly, he can be like, okay, is he, you just receive me as my, your, my Lord, as your Lord and Savior. I'm trying to be like three different people here. As your Lord and Savior, I'm going to just take you right now. I can take you right now because why? Jesus is the only way to the Father. He is the only way to the Father. She accepted him. But why? 
is he still here? Why? It's because we're here to help progress the message of Christ. That's what we're doing. That's what we're supposed to be doing. Not living to get this new brand new car or the best looking clothes or have the most money in our bank account or any of that stuff that could be taken away. Because as the Bible says, we come into this world empty handed and we leave it empty handed. We're going to leave all of our wealth. We're going to leave all of our riches. We're going to leave all of our friends. We're going to leave all of our family members. We're going to leave all of our, everything that we have, everything that we own. Why? And if we know Jesus, it's because we know that he's the true eternal gift. He's the one that we want to be with. He's the one that we want to go home to. He's the one that we want to praise and worship. And that's all that's going to matter in heaven. None of that stuff. So why am I telling you? It's because Satan has deceived a lot of us, and especially Christians, of knowing that, yeah, God wants to bless us and he has promises and the truth and everything for us, but we can't be doing it just for our own pleasure. There's a difference of doing something right with a good heart than doing something right with a bad heart. Does that make sense? Like, that's, that's exactly what it, what's happening. When you're living life for pleasure, you're doing, doing life with the wrong heart. So 2 Timothy 3, 1 through 5. Sorry, Kylie. She gets mad at me when I say the verse, and then I just go somewhere else, and it pops on the screen, and she yells at me when I get home, and doesn't cook me dinner, and doesn't do all this. I'm just joking. <laughs> She's going to be mad at me now. She's amazing. <laughs> I'm just joking. This is my opportunity just to have fun. Um, with her. But 2 Timothy 3, 1 through 5. Are you ready, baby? Good. So it says, uh, the, the subcategory says the dangers of the last days. And it starts off in verse 1. You should know this, Timothy, that in the last days there will be very difficult times. For people will love only themselves and their money. They will be boasting and proud, scoffing God, at disobedient to their parents, and ungrateful. They will consider nothing sacred. They will be unloving and unforgiving. They will slander others and have no self-control. They will be cruel and hate what is good. They will betray their friends, be reckless, be puffed up with pride, and love pleasure rather than God. And love pleasure rather than God. They will act religious. Wow. How many Christians act religious and not actually know who Jesus is? But they will reject the power that could make them godly. Stay away from people like that. They will love pleasure rather than God. They will act religious, but they will reject the power that could make them godly. Stay away from people like that. People will come to church every single Sunday, act like everything's okay, they got it all together, and yet they don't know the power of God. They don't have the power of God living in their life. They don't have the relationship with God. They don't have it. So that's how a Christian, Christian can be so broken and can be so empty is because they're not living completely for God. And so Proverbs if you jump over to Proverbs 14, 12, I have to find this one because I ran out of bookmarks. Oh, no. Did everybody find it yet? No? Oh, my goodness. It's okay. Proverbs 14, 12, it says, There is a path before each person that seems right, but it ends in death. There is a path for each person that seems right, but it ends in death. So let's go back to our, our three truths that we think it is. If it feels good, it's okay. If it makes you happy, it's okay. If it's not hurting others, it's okay. So there's a path that seems right. These seem right. These three statements seem right, but it ends in death. So I'm here to tell you tonight, live life for God. Live life for God. What's that mean? Live according to his ways. Don't flip his truth. Don't flip his words. Don't live for yourself. Don't live for the pleasure. Don't live for your boyfriend or your girlfriend. Don't live for anybody else. Live for God and nothing else. And your way, your path, it won't end up in eternal death. Because 
something in life may feel good now, but the result of that may feel bad when you're dead forever. I'm talking about hell. The last days are serious. Hell is serious. Heaven is, is serious. It's real. If you believe in heaven, you have to believe in hell. So if we're doing things because it just feels good, but really our past could be so deceived, we could be ending up after we're dead in a place that feels very bad, very bad. Places that, you, that the, it's so hot that you can't even fathom what it is. Like your skin is just melting off your bones, but somehow because Satan has no mercy and he has no grace or anything like that, your skin just keeps regenerating and it just keeps melting and you just feel like you're just burning yourself over and over and over and over and over and over and over for eternity. And so when we get the seriousness of that, are we going to live our life based off of our own pleasures and off of our own desires? Are we actually going to live a life for God? Like, living a life for God is for real. It's not just coming to church, showing up every Sunday, or just going to a friend's house for a Bible study, or just singing a few songs, but it's to actually have a passion for Christ. And that passion come out. And so many people lose sight of this passion because they don't let it come out because they're so worried about the outward appearance. And so worried about an outward appearance for us to shine, but on the inside we're, we're internally dark. And so we look for pleasure in our life to give us the light that we want to make us feel good. But it's not okay if it only feels good, just because it feels good or if it makes you happy or if it's not hurting others. <clears throat> As the way of sin and wickedness does, it's promising, it seems right, but it leads to destruction. How do I know that? We can go all the way back to Genesis when creation started with Adam and Eve. And I'm just going to just probably float around in this passage because it just goes back and forth a little bit. But I'll start in Genesis 2, 8. It says, Then the Lord God planted a garden in Eden in the east, and there he placed the man he had made. The Lord God made all sorts of trees grow up from the ground. Trees that were beautiful and that produced delicious fruit. In the middle of the garden, he placed the tree of life and the tree of knowledge of good and evil. And we're just going to jump over the, to chapter 3. And right in the first one, this is when Adam and Eve, they sin. And it says, the serpent was the shrewdest of all the wild ample, animals. Amples. I don't know what amples are. Shrewdest of all the wild animals the Lord God had made. One day he asked the woman, did God really say you must not eat from the fruit of any of the trees in the garden? Of course we may eat from the trees in the garden, the woman replied. It's only the fruit from the tree in the middle of the garden that we are not allowed to eat. <clears throat> God said you must not eat or even touch it. If you do, you will die. You won't die, the serpent replied to the, to the woman. God knows that your eyes will be open as soon as you eat it, and you will be like God, knowing both good and evil. Can I tell you that God didn't want them to eat from the, and from the tree, not just because of the fruit that it gave, but God doesn't want us, he doesn't intend us to even know what evil is. There's so many other trees that God made. It says he made so many other kinds of trees in the Garden of Eden. And then there's two trees he put in the middle, the tree of life and the tree of, under, of knowing good and evil. We've already been given a tree of life. That's Jesus. We've already been given that. So why are we interested in knowing evil? We're not meant to know evil. We're not meant to understand. We're not meant to even want to be in it because God created us to take care of his garden. God created us in the image of himself. And, be, and God cannot be with evil. He has to separate himself because he's so good. That's what he made us after. That's who we are. We are good. But when we go and live life for our own pleasure, we now go into the evil. And we start to, go, we start to get away from it. And so it says, the, the woman was convinced. She saw the tree was beautiful and its fruit looked delicious. It's not hurting anyone. If it, this feels good because it looks good. It looks delicious. But can I tell you that we're all where we are because of this? I don't know. Maybe your decision every single day that you make is actually affecting more than just you. And just take responsibility of that and know that you have a bigger impact than just living a life of nothing. God made us for a reason, to take care of the 
beauty of what he created. The woman was convinced she saw that the tree was beautiful and the fruit looked delicious and she wanted the wisdom it would give her. She, so she took some of the fruit and ate it. Then she gave some of it to her husband who was with her and he ate it too. At that moment, their eyes were open and they suddenly felt shame at their nakedness. Before this, if you jump back up to the, the chapter before, it says, now the man and his wife were both naked, but they felt no shame. Now, after they both take a bite of the fruit from the tree of both good and evil, they know they recognize their shame and that they're naked and they go and hide from God. That's the same thing that we do. It's the same that we do. Before, if you think about it, if you've never done something before, but you know that it's wrong and all your friends are doing it and you think that, and, and you know that they're doing it and you see that they're doing it and they're just telling you, you gotta do it so good. It's so good. Drugs, they're so great. And then the one time you do it, you now understand and you know how evil it is. And now you recognize it, and now it's got you, it's caught you. Same thing with sex. Same thing with any other addiction. Same thing with twisting God's word. Every single thing, we are going to be deceived if we're going to continue to live life to our own pleasures and not by the word of God. And so, there's many trees with fruit. And do we even know what the Garden of Eden means, the definition of it, the definition of Eden means pleasure. We have already been given everything that we need to have pleasure through God himself, through God himself. So when we're listening to the devil and say, we can go love anyone that we want, that's not true. We can go and have sex with anyone we want, that's not true. We can have drugs with, and, and be okay, that's not true. We can go have a drink here and there, it's not true. We can do this that's against the word of God, that's not true. That's exactly what Eden did. And they were banned from pleasure. Looks like we're living in a world banned from pleasure, so we got to go seek our own pleasure because we don't have a relationship with Jesus Christ to actually give it back to us. We have been born and created to only accept and to have the pleasure of God. I feel Jesus in here. Wow. We have been given many trees that produce fruit in our life, but we choose the one we're not meant to have. Come on, God, bring your rain, bring your thunder. Holy fire, holy fire, Holy Ghost fire. Yes. Bring the storms because he calms them anyways. We're deceived and end up hiding because what pleasures we think are good for us still leave us broken and empty. The pleasures of this world will leave you empty. Have you noticed? I mean, I've noticed this. Uh, back in, like, before I was even following God, I t- I've told you guys this probably multiple times, but I grew up in a family that I didn't have my father, so I was labeled a broken family. And so, like, I thought I needed a girlfriend and everything that came along with a girlfriend to complete me. So I had sex before marriage. I had a sex uh, with multiple women, and I'm telling you this because of see- I'm a true testimony of what God can do and transform. And that's what matters. I'm not ashamed of what I've done, but I'm just going to use it to just empower people to live a life for God. And so I've done that. And so I know the difference because every single time that's happened, I've given my, all of myself, my full self to another person. I've always been left empty afterwards. It feels good for an hour. It feels good for a month. It feels good for a year, but what happens when that person's gone and that leaves or just something changes and because you're not actually building the standards that God wants you to build within a relationship, the the love dies no matter what, the things that you have in it dies, everything that you guys do in that relationship dies because you're not doing it according to God's will. You can't have life when you're doing things to death. The only time death can become life is when you bring God into it. And living life to have the pleasures of the world will not do that. It will leave you dead. It will leave you dead. It goes and says in 1 Timothy, First Timothy chapter 5, 5 through 6, is talking about, this is just talking about a widow, and I'll explain it to you in just a second, but now a true widow, 
a woman who is truly alone in this world has placed her hope in God. She prays night and day asking God for his help. She prays night and day asking God for his help. She comes to church every Sunday. She prays. She worships. She does this. She asks God for help all the time. She has conversations. But the widow who lives only for pleasure is spiritually dead even while she lives. Even while she lives, she's still dead because she's living for pleasure and not living for God. And it goes on to say in 2 Timothy 4, 3 through 8, and this is why I'm telling you guys this is why I'm bringing it up because it's this right now. For a time is coming when people will no longer listen to sound and wholesome teaching. They will follow their own desires and will look for teachers who will tell them whatever their itching ears want to hear. They will reject the truth and chase after myths. But you should keep a clear mind in every situation. Don't be afraid of suffering for the Lord. Work at telling others the good news and fully carry out the ministry God has given you. As for me, my life has already been poured out as an offering to God. The time of my death is near. I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have remained faithful. And now the prize awaits me. The crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will give me on the day of his return. And the prize is not just for me, but for all who eagerly look forward to his appearing. Worship team, you guys can come up. So, we've been created in God's image. We've been created to have, the, have pleasure but there's two different pleasures. There's the pleasure of the world and pleasure of God. And if we just have a relation with God, we'll have pleasure of everything instead of temporary pleasure when we seek it into other people, seek it into anything but God. So now I feel like everyone's kind of like, wow, my life kind of sucks. I felt that way. I felt that way. But it wasn't until I started to actually live my life for God. I struggled even becoming, as when I gave my life to Christ, I still struggled with worldly things. But it's the passion that I had. It's the knowing that, you know what, I can't continue. I cannot continue to live the life that I want to live. I cannot continue to go the way that I want to go. I cannot continue to listen to the, the politicians tell me what to believe. I cannot listen to all these social groups tell me what's right and what's wrong. I can't listen to my best friend to lead me into everything that I am supposed to become. I can't depend on my wife now to even give me the love that I deserve. I can't even depend on her to give me the full amount of love. I cannot even depend on her to give me the pleasure I can't depend on my job to keep me secure so I can have the finances to continue to to keep living the life of God. I can't depend on anything but God. And but we have. It's because, and then we just get so deceived. It's exactly what Eden did in the garden. Satan gave her this, look at this fruit, and twisted the truth. And when when we twist the truth, get the truth twisted, keep going around in circles keep going around in circles but when we just live the life God has given us and live the way that he wants us to live through his commands not to just limit us not to have rules but because of he knows exactly what a life in circles does it gets us nowhere but he's given us a straight path a straight path so all the social groups you follow follow them but don't believe them all the thing, all the things that your best friend that you just think is so cool and he just has you doing or she just oh yeah you can come have a party with us come drink with us come smoke with us it's okay flip the camera off in your instagram stories it's okay say the f word a couple times it's okay it's not okay it may feel good in the moment you want to know why because you have one spirit that's operating you and that's satan and his demons in the demonic realm. And it feels good because that's what they want you to do. 
But can I tell you that when you shut that down and you know the difference between Satan and God, that the God, the living spirit of God is so much better. It has so much more pleasure. It has so much more fruit. It has so much more for your life. It has a straight path for you. It has so much more going on for you. It gives you hope. It has the love. It fills you. It completes you. It builds you up and it encourages you and it gets you excited and it makes you have a passion and it gets you have a purpose and you have something to live forward to. You have something to look forward to. We just have to make a decision are you done and are you really stinking tired of being broken and empty? Because if you are, we got to let God have his way in us. His way in us. And follow the truth. So any relationship that you know that you shouldn't be in, because it doesn't follow the truth, get out of it. And I guarantee your life will, will switch. Will it be hard? Yes, because of how, how long you have been doing a, such a lifestyle, it's going to be hard. Believing something for 20-some years compared to believing something for four years, I still struggle with it. It's hard. It's the same thing for anything else. Once you break the routine, once you break the pattern of living life for pleasure, and you say, no, no more. I want it. I have to want it. This is the deepest desire that I want in my life right now. And I don't care how to get it except for going with God. So what I, whatever I have to do, whatever I have to throw off, whatever I have to get rid of, and it talks about in Hebrews, whatever hinders you, Hebrews 12, verses 1 through 2. Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a huge crowd of witnesses to the life of faith, let us strip off every weight that slows us down. What slows us down? Everything that is not of God slows us down. Everything. Let us strip it off, especially the sin that is so easily trips us up. And let us run with endurance the race God has set before us. We do this by keeping our eyes on Jesus, the champion who initiates and perfects our faith. If I just have everyone stand up right now, we're just going to go into a time of having people just receive that. Keeping our eyes on Jesus. So if you are determined, with everyone's heads bowed, eyes closed, if you are determined, if you truly, and I mean if you if you 90% want this life for God, if you 99.9% want this life of God, don't raise your hand. Keep living the empty, broken life that you're living. Never satisfied. No love that you're looking for. Never good enough. Always falling short. Always coming up short. Don't have anything to look forward to. Keep living it. But I have good news. If you want to live your life for God 100% and see the garden that he has for every single one of us because he's created us to be so beautiful and to have the pleasures of God instead of the pleasures of this world, raise your hand. This means you are making a covenant with God right now saying, I will get rid of everything that is slowing me down. I will get rid of the foundation I'm building my relationships on. I will get rid of the things that I do in my free time that are not pleasing to God. I will get rid of the things that I think about myself that I know God has not made me to think because that's not how he created me. He didn't create you ugly. He created you beautiful. He didn't create you for nothing. He created you for a purpose. Get rid of those things. And now, run with endurance the race God has already set for you. Already set for you by keeping your eyes on Jesus. So with everyone's hands raised, if that's you 100%, just raise your hand. I'm just gonna pray. And I'm just going to ask God to just break off those things that are holding you back. 
break off those things that keep bringing up stress, keep bringing up a pressure, keep taking you down. And we're gonna, we're going to explode with passion because when we start to live life for God, you become alive. So Lord, right now, Holy Ghost, bring your fire and you burn up every single thing that is not of you, God, any spirit that is coming against every single person in this place, in this place itself, in this community, the things of this world that you come and you burn it up. You burn it up because you have no right to be here. Any evil spirit that is already here, you have no right to be here. And you are being called out right now by the authority of God, by the blood that God has already given us for the power to call by his name that anything will be casted out, that anything will be healed, that anything that from dead be given to life. So right now, Holy Spirit, be loose and take a part of this kingdom with your people that you have created right now in Jesus' name and just become the love that they're looking for and be the person that they're looking for and be in the situations that they want you to be in and help them follow the straight path for you. Come and show us that reckless love that you have for us now in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. And now you're probably thinking, what do I do with this? What do I do with this? I have all this power. I have all this stuff now. Because it happens like that. When you ask God to do that, it's, it's that simple. Every single morning, we have to cast off the things that are not of God. Or else we will continue to live a life for pleasure and not for God. So what do we do? We just create spiritual disciplines. We have the desire of Christ now. We read our word. We pray. We fast. We come to church. We serve God. We give him glory. We give him honor and praise. We know, guys, we know the things that don't please God, do we not? Can we just be real and honest and transparent? We know the things that we do that don't please God. But if we want the life that we really want, that we don't even know that is there for us, we have to get rid of those things and cast them to the side. Because the life that we have been given, when we live it for pleasure, we're going into everything in our life. We're, we're moving forward of what could be promised instead of already living on a promise and in a promise. See, a life of pleasure is, this looks promising. This looks like it's good. Oh, but it ends in, ends in a death, ends in bad, bad news, whatever you want to call it. When we have a choice, when instead of, it looks promising. We have a choice to live. It's already promised. Instead of, it looks like it's good, we have someone that says, it's already good and it's the truth. Instead of living a life of pleasure, we live a life for God. So I don't know where you, where you guys are at right now. Maybe you don't even know who Jesus is, but maybe you've fallen off and you know you've been living a life of pleasure. This is a, an opportunity for you to come back to God full heartedly. So with everyone's close your eyes and bow your heads, this is between you and God. If you've fallen short, like we all have, and you want to come back with a full swing, with full power, with full passion, with full intention, with the, the fullness of God, this is for you. And if you don't know who Jesus is and you want to have that life that I am talking about, a full, complete, whole life, everything that you're looking for, everything already provided for you, it's, it's found in Christ and Christ alone. If that's you, just raise your hand right now. You've fallen off and you want to get back on. This is the moment. Strike while the iron is hot. Don't wait tomorrow. Don't wait for next week because you'll only be deceived. Thank you, Jesus. You guys can put your hands down. So let's just pray this all together. And after we pray, we're going to have people who went to Canada uh, to have that, who had that, carried that, carried back the anointing uh, that was put onto them. We're going to have them over here uh, praying for anyone who needs extra prayer. But we're all going to say this together. We're just going to pray. Uh, to God just to come back into our lives and just to set us straight. Just repeat after me. So, Lord Jesus, thank you for never giving up on me. Thank you for coming to this world to die on a cross. To die for my sin. 
to set me free, to give me the life that you have already purposed for me. I believe that you died on the cross. I believe that you died for my sin. I believe that you rose again. I believe that you're the son of God. I believe that you are the living God that lives within me. So right now, Lord, come and be my best friend. Come and be my Lord and Savior of my life in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's give a hand for everyone that raises their hand. If you have anything that you need prayer for, come over here and get prayer. We'll have the prayer team over there. Other than that, these guys will be up here for just a couple more minutes uh, worshiping. Just passionately start worshiping God now. Passionately start living your life for God now. Stop living for your own self. Stop living for your own pleasure. And let's recklessly love for God. And let's recklessly just take over this community and our generation for a good purpose. Can I get an amen in the house? Amen. Can I get an amen in the house? Can I get a hallelujah in the house? Can I get a praise Jesus in the house? Yeah, Jesus. So if you need prayer, come get prayer. But if not, enjoy the worship.